This is a rotary optic encoder. There are many types of encoders. A rotary encoder, also called shaft encoder, it's a device that converts the angular position or motion of a shaft or axle to an analog digital code. To obtain the same results, we could use mechanical, magnetic or optic encoders. So today we are going to see how an optic encoder works and what is an infrared optic switch. So let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. As its name tells us, an encoder is a device that encodes information. If we take a look at the definition of encode, we can see that it could also mean the action of converting one system of communication into another. In our case, we are going to convert angular motion into digital pulses using an optic switch. So let's get to the point. What better way to understand how something works than a real life example? So I have this small DC motor. At 12 volts, it can reach up to 1400 rotation per minute. What I want to achieve is to precisely control its rotation, its speed and position. So for that I designed this disc. As you can see it has 16 holes and 16 teeth. It also has a 2mm hole in the middle. So I placed this disc tight on the shaft of the motor so it will rotate at the same time with the shaft. Now if there would be a way to count the holes in the disc while rotating, then I would know that each 16 holes I've got a full rotation of the shaft. Or even more, if there would be a way to detect both holes and fills, I would know that each 16 holes and 16 fills I've got a full rotation. And that would give me even more precision. So the next element that we need to complete our encoding system, it's a device that would be able to detect these steps on my disk. For that I will use an optic switch. A basic optic switch works like this. It must have two elements. One is the transmitter, which in this case is an infrared light LED. The second element is the detector, which in this case will be a phototransistor. This phototransistor is like a normal BJT transistor, but its base is exposed to the light. This is a light sensible base and works like this. When light touches the base of this transistor, the collector to emitter circuit is open and the transistor doesn't allow current to flow through it. When no light touches the light sensible base, current is allowed to flow from the collector to the emitter. So basically our phototransistor works like a switch that is open in light and closed in darkness or vice versa. But to avoid no more visible light to affect the circuit, we will use an infrared sensor. This type of transistor will activate only with infrared waves. That's why we are going to use an infrared LED diode. The basic configuration of this optic switch goes like this. First we put the infrared diode face to face with the phototransistor, with the drill disc that we have designed before in the middle. In this way, when we have a hole in the disc, light can pass and open the circuit of the sensor. And when we have a fill, light won't pass and the phototransistor circuit remain closed. So just that easy we are able to detect holes and fills on our disc. The next part is to tune up a little bit this circuit. I want to use this circuit with an Arduino microcontroller and be able to count the steps with it. So that means that the circuit would work with 5 volts. To make sure that we won't burn the LED diode due to high current, we will add a 270 ohm resistor between the 5 volt supply and the LED diode. The next step is a little bit tricky. We just said that the light sensible transistor will allow or not allow current to flow. But we can measure current with the Arduino microcontroller. But we can measure voltage. So for that we have to add a pull up resistor between the transistor collector and the VCC 5 volt supply. In this way, when there is no current flowing through the transistor, having a pull-up resistor connecting to the VCC, we will have a high voltage on the output. And when the transistor is closed, we will have ground or low voltage on the output. Now we could measure that voltage with one of the Arduino inputs. When current is allowed to flow through the transistor, there will be a voltage drop on the output. This voltage drop will depend on the transistor resistance value and the pull-up resistor. 
So now we could measure both high and low voltage with the Arduino input. But first we have to make sure that the voltage drop range is the one that we desire. If we look at the Arduino datasheet, we can see that it takes as a low logic signal a voltage lower than 1.5 volts and as a high a voltage higher than that. So we have to make sure that the signal on open and close state of the switch jumps from a value lower than 1.5 volts to one higher than that. To do that I've made a small test using potentiometers instead of a fixed value resistor. This is the schematic for the test. Make sure that the diode potentiometer value will never be too low or the diode might burn out. Now start changing the value of the detector potentiometer for both on and off states of the switch. I've managed to obtain almost 0 volts for off and almost 5 volts for on. This range will work perfect for my project. When I obtain the perfect value, I measure the resistance of the potentiometer and substitute the potentiometer with a fixed value resistor. This is the final circuit and the resistor values that I've used. Now I solder the resistor and finish my circuit. I want to use this configuration for my prototype of a CNC machine. I am working for about one year to create a 100% own design of a CNC machine. Usually, a CNC machine works with step motors due to their high precision. For example, this NEMA 70 motor takes 200 steps for just one rotation. In my case, I have a full rotation with just 32 steps, counting the holes and the fills of the disc. You could design your own disc with more holes, but in my case I want it to be small and also to have a quite good precision. Now we have to make sure that the functional frequency of our optic switch will work with the speed of our motor. So at maximum speed, which is 14,000 rotation per minute, multiplied by 32 steps for each rotation, we obtain a switching frequency of about 13 kHz. So I had to make sure that my optic switch will handle that speed. I check the datasheet of the optic switch and make sure that it has the desired frequency range. To encode the steps, I connect the output of the optic switch to one of the Arduino digital pins. Using the digital read function, I can detect when the pin is high or low state. So now from here I could count steps, measure the rotation speed and even calculate the angle of rotation. To reduce the speed and increase the precision of my optic encoding motor, I've designed a gear system and 3D printed a few prototypes for my final step motor. This one has a gear rotation ratio from 1 to 200. So that means that each 200 rotation of the DC motor, I will have one single rotation of the exterior shaft. That gives me a precision of 6400 steps per rotation, which is a lot. So if we know the amount of steps for 360 degrees, we can obtain the amount of steps for each angle value. This is an example where I set the motor to spin back and forth 180 degrees. Now to 90 degrees. And finally to 45 degrees. I also had to control the speed rotation and slow the motor down before it reached the desired amount of steps. To control the speed of the motor, I've used an H-bridge controlled with a PWM signal. If you want to know how an H-bridge works and build one yourself, just check my video of H-bridges in the description. The code of this CNC prototype is much more complex and it combines both step counting, speed control and PID control of the speed. Without a speed control, the motor will do about 200 more steps after the stop signal is given due to its inertial movement. So for that I have to carefully decrease the speed before I stop the motor. There is this other type of optic switch, which does not have the emitter and sensor face to face. In this case, both are faced in the same direction. To obtain a low and high step for this optic switch, we could use a disc that would reflect light to simulate a hole, and to absorb light to simulate a fill. This kind of black and white disc will do the job. When the paper is white, light will reflect into the sensor and we will have the same result as in the hole in the other disc. When the paper is black, no light is reflected. Important advice. Always make the step of your disc bigger than the optic switch slot. 
If not, in some cases you could have both on and off state of the switch while rotating. Also, the signal will have a trapezoidal shape instead of a nice square pulse due to the size of the hole on your disc. I hope that you like this project. Once the entire CNC project is finished, you will have the entire project available for download as open source, but there is still a lot of work to do. This optic switch part is just a small fraction of the entire project. If you like this video, please give a like and share with your friends. Also subscribe for more videos and help my projects on Patreon. Thanks again and see you later guys.